flood it later on. Okay. I am going to assign a participant to type. Oh, that is very strange. I need to review this facetin of this um, uh, Zoom account. It's not allowing me to share anything. But uh, here we are. I would like to request um, TK to pray for us today before we start, please. Would you like to, to share what pray? your prayer, please? Yes, my brother. You can pray. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord, our God, we thank you for being with us and protecting us since the last time we were together and throughout this day until now when we gathered. We thank you, Lord, and we believe that Holy Spirit, you're going to be with us and reveal to us new wisdom that we need from you, the Holy Scriptures. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you bless this service so that we learn so much and we grow in, in our spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, Rotenda, Michael, Albert, and anyone who will be watching uh, for this on YouTube as well later on. Uh, when we will be uh, broadcasting it. Today, uh, we will be addressing three important questions. And I think it deserves to, for us to, to, to focus on it. Uh, the three questions were asked by uh, Albert. The first one was about rebaptism. The second question was about children rebaptism. And uh, children baptism, sorry. And the third question was about uh, is baptism really necessary for us to be part of a member or a member of the church? So let me uh, share the, the Bible to us. Uh, what can I do? Let me share something on the screen and copy and paste based on that one. I think that way it would be much better. So let me have a new file here. Unfortunately, I cannot use that. Let me try with Notepad. Okay. I hope Notepad is big enough. So the question that was asked was um, about baptism. And let's zoom in some way to control and plus. Okay, excellent. Can you see my screen based on this one, please? Okay. Do you see the screen, my brother? My brothers? Yes. Okay. So the first one is about a question of baptism. Uh, the first uh, question that we will be using for it is, what is baptism? And the answer for that uh, question, let us read it from Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 4 to 11. I am going to share another screen as well, which is the Bible uh, on this one. So let us go to Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 4. Okay, I would invite uh, Michael to open for us uh, from the verse 4 to verse 11, please. Therefore, we were buried with him. <laughs> through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the death by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Uh, up to 11, yes. Oh. <laughs> For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we will also, we, will, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, 
knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. What Pleasure. we have learned from this uh, uh, reading that Michael just read, number one that let me uh, show to you on the Bible is this. It says that a baptism then is like we die. It is like we die as Christ died. We are buried in too deep. And that is exactly the reason we are doing the baptism because it cannot happen through sprinkling. You need to be dipped into water and you die as you go down under the water. And then just as Christ was raised, so when you raise up out of that, uh, when you raise up out of that um, water, it is exactly the same way as well that you raise, like as you are resurrected out of the tomb and you are rise, risen like Jesus Christ has been risen. So that's exactly the reason we practice baptism. And it says in the verse that is below, it says that he who died has been freed from sin. So the importance of baptism here is then that it is exactly like a death in sin. And that is why it is crucial for us to be baptized. Back to the other um, screen then, to answer to the question that was asked here, then we have three answers that are said here. Number one is this, we die with and like Christ once as the Bible said. We are resurrected like him in capital letter because it is Jesus that we are talking here. We are alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord and death and resurrection is what we call baptism. Isn't it? So that's exactly what we are saying here. Number two now, the question that is being asked here in the question number two. What is baptism then? What also is baptism? And we can see that in the book of Galatians chapter three and verse um, 27. I will, try to, I will try to copy it here. I hope it can be much better that way. Okay. Can I request uh, the brother uh, Albert to, to read it for us, please? For as many of you as were baptized into Christ. Um, let me format and word wrap. That way you can see it. Yes, please. Uh, it says as for uh, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on mm -hmm. I've put on Christ in another way. In another way to explain it then, baptism is to put Jesus Christ on. It's like having a new pure clothing when you accept Jesus Christ as your savior. That is what it means, baptism. Now, the uh, question that is asked now, number three, is this. Where in the Bible do we see rebaptism? Because that is the question that we are going try to try to understand here. I would like now, who else has not yet read the, whose turn is now? Is it Albert? Or is it Michael? Maybe I don't I'm mind going Michael. again. Okay. It's a, it's a long one again, my brother. So thank you very much for your dedication. 
So okay. we go to start again on uh, this one. Let me share it. So uh -huh. it is with when Paul was at Ephesus. So you can start, my brother. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance. So to him who would, oft, would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, when we read about this one, this is um, one of the only instances in the Bible that we can see where they were rebaptism. They were already baptized into John's baptism. But when they were baptized in that way, it seems like the Holy Spirit did not come unto them. And what happened again was like Paul started to teach them again. And after Paul started to teach them again, they were repented based on what Paul taught them. And we can see that they have been baptized again. What happened now is he laid, he baptized them and he laid his hand on them. And the Holy Spirit came and they spoke in tongue and prophesied. Uh, back to what we, back to our um, notepad again. As we can see here then, uh, it is needed if a person has, uh, the question is this, do we need rebaptism? And, and the president of our church, the pastor Ted Wilson is answering and I will be sharing his answer here based on what we read through Michael as well. It says, it is needed if a person has a greater understanding of what it means to follow Christ by accepting new truth, which means then that if somebody taught you a greater truth that you never understood, and, uh, uh, and uh, like for the people here, they never understood that there is a Holy Spirit, it's uh, something very crucial in the, the church to know about God, and they did not know that there is Holy Spirit. So they were taught about the spirit and then they were repenting of their sin and they started to be rebaptized again. The second reason that was uh, the pastor Ted Wilson said as well here, and I will be sharing here, it says, if a person apostatized, uh, apostatized, apostatizes, from the Christian experience by making choices openly contrary to Christ's teaching, violating Sabbath, adopting body-destroying habits, and living immoral lifestyle. That's what he says, which means then that, let's say that you have been already baptized, but people saw you violating the Sabbath openly. People saw you starting smoking and drinking and doing these things. Us people starting so seeing you uh, uh, living in immorality with another woman or another lady. And that's what, what it is talking here about living immoral lifestyle. So when those are openly done, yet you knew the teaching of the church, then the only way for you to rejoin again the, the church after the, the name of that person has been removed from the church because of Matthew 18 is to be rebaptized again. So here is uh, another uh, question, uh, answer that we say, if we summarize what we said, when the clothing, which is Jesus Christ, you wear has been dipped into sin again, then you need to be baptized. Now, the question, next question is this. And I invite uh, 
uh, Albert to read it for us. What is the baptism for the person who received the new light? What is baptism for per a person for a person who received a new light? I invite you to read for us first uh, Peter, first Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Let me copy and paste it this side. Okay, you may read my brother. There is also an antitype which now serves as baptism, not the removal of the of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God mm -hmm. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. It was talking about baptism then in this part, and it says that baptism is the answer of a good conscience toward God. And that is why we need to be baptized. When we felt that we have sinned against God, then it is an answer. The baptism is the answer of a good conscience toward God. So when you felt God talking to you and convincing you of your sin, then baptism is the answer to that. That is what it says here. Now, Number four, number five uh, question now, and we, we are going to read it from the, the book, uh, The Spirit of Prophecy. This time it is, what is the spirit of prophecy? What the spirit of prophecy defines baptism? And that is uh, from this book called Testimonies, volume uh, six, Page 91, I invite TK to unmute and read it for us. Okay. What the spirit of prophecy define, what the spirit of prophecy defines as baptism. Ellen G. White Testimonies, Volume 4, page 91 says, Christ has made baptism the sign of entrance to his spiritual kingdom. Mm -hmm. So what we see in this volume four, uh, six of, 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 of testimonies then is that the baptism is a sign. It's a sign of entrance to the spiritual kingdom. And this is exactly tallying with what Jesus said, what Jesus said in John chapter three and the verse five. This is what it says. And I invite you, my brother, to read it as well. Uh, in John chapter uh, 3 verse 5 it says it says Jesus answered most assuredly I say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God thank you very much the, the verb crucial that is here is enter so unless you are born of water and spirit you cannot enter and that is why baptism is a sign of entrance to the spiritual kingdom. The number six question now is this, and we will be reading it from the book, uh, the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church Manual. I would invite now um, my brother Michael to read it for us. It is Church Manual, page 87. It is not the practice of the church to require baptism, baptism on the part of those coming to us from other churches who have already been baptized by inner immersion and who have lived consistent Christian lives in harmony with the light they had, unless they should themselves desire to be rebaptized. However, it is recommended that in all cases, rebaptism would be desirable thank you very much in another case then then we recommend always rebaptism but if a person is not willing to be baptized then the criteria is they need to be baptized in the way that jesus has been baptized and number two they have lived in a consistent christian life in harmony with the light that they have received which means then that they were not going against what God is telling them. 
with you and not sinning. We are talking about a person that is living in a Christian life before, uh, after they, baptize, they have been baptized in another church. So that is what our um, church manual recommends. It is possible not to baptize them, but only through um, what we call it uh, prophecy. Uh, what we call it again? I forgot the, the word to use it. Prophecy of faith. I think that's the word in, in, in English. Prof that profession of faith. Profession of faith. Sorry, my or brother. Thank or, you. Or even, even better, confession of faith. Confession of faith or uh, uh, profession of faith. Thank you very much, my brother Michael. That's exactly the word that uh, we needed here. So when that is happening, then it is a confession of faith that we use those people in front of the church. And I will be reading to you at the end what are the questions that we will be asking those people if that is the case. Now, as we continue our discussion now, we have finished the first part. We have finished the first part. Are there any questions regarding that section before we move to the next one? I'd just like to actually add something um, yes, please. You know, on the infant baptism. It's from Matthew 28. So in Matthew 28, verse, verse 18, 19, and 20, also known as the part that deals with what we call the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. It says there, mm -hmm. verse 18, uh, and Let Jesus, me open for you. Let me open for you. Matthew 28 and the verse 18. Okay. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's, there's two, two things that stand out here very clearly for me. Um, in verse 19, make disciples, right? Mm -hmm. And verse 20, teaching them to observe. Actually, mm -hmm. that's three. So, you know, you, 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 can, you can say you baptize in a baby. You can even not sprinkle them. You can put them under water. But in essence, both of those things are null and void because it says here, you need to make disciples of them mm -hmm. right they'll be of mm -hmm. one of the nations okay so that's not already an issue but you have to make disciples of them and then verse 20 you have to teach them so you can't teach a baby so obviously mm -hmm. because you can't teach you can't disciple them right and then more so you know that just nails this thing is you you a baby can't observe something that you have taught them because they will not learn it you can try you can try and teach them but they won't learn it so i mean that that already tells us that you know um babies should not be uh, baptized because you know amongst things it's quite obvious that they can't make decisions for themselves um uh, that's morally impacting and binding for the rest of their lives and that's exactly what you need to be able to do to decide i want to follow jesus i want to follow his precepts and be baptized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. That's exactly uh, what we are talking about. I wonder what kind of thing you see when, when I share both, both screen. Are you able to see both of them? Yes. Is it better or is it worse? I can I can't see. I'm, I'm using a phone right now, so I can't see. It is too small. Okay, let me then yeah. share yeah. this one alone. Okay, so uh, back to this one, exactly like Michael just explained about the, the children of uh, and the baptism, we will be coming back to what he explained. And it, it is very crucial that what he said there. So please hold on on that one. I will come back to what Michael said. But let me uh, share one by one what, what he said. First of all, the question that is about children baptism is this. 
what Jesus said about children. Because that question matters when it says uh, about should they be baptized or not? So the question that we are going to ask now is this, what Jesus did say about uh, children. So let me uh, move to the other screen again. And let's go into the book of Luke, Luke chapter uh, 18 and verse 16 and uh, 17. Uh, Who's turn now, TK, would you please read it for us? From which verse? Uh, 16 and 17. Okay, cool. But Jesus called them to him and said, let the, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Thank you very much. In another way, if for if the kingdom of God is for them, why shall they still be baptized? We told there that. The, the baptism is a sign to enter the kingdom of God. But if they are already in the kingdom of God, why they still need to go out and enter the gate again? Uh, I hope you understand what I mean. So, yeah, exactly. So, in another way, then, the kingdom of God is needs to you need to enter the kingdom of god but you cannot enter the kingdom of god unless you have uh, in no sense the purity of the character of like as of the children and they are fitted for the kingdom of god so if they are fitted for the kingdom of god why do we still need to ask them to be baptized again and that is why we do not baptize children because they are still innocent. They do not need to repent. They do not need to believe because they already have or in the kingdom of God. In another way, he said that the kingdom of heaven is for people like, the, like those children. Now the question number two is this. Based on this, what is Jesus? Number two what Jesus did to children who came to him. I would like to invite you in Matthew 19 and verse 15. Let me copy that one from this one so that you can read it. Uh, would you please read it, Albert, now? And uh, he laid his hands on them and departed from there. Mm -hmm. In another way, if we can see then from this one, if Jesus is not able to, uh, if Jesus is not able to, if, if Jesus is not allowing us to baptize children because they are in that innocence and purity that he needs people to be, then what he did is this. He laid his hands on them to bless them. Uh, welcome, uh, Kwati, uh, uh, Koka. May you uh, uh, unmute yourself. Tell me your name again, please. Kwati, Makei, Koka. Yeah, McKay. I think it was Sister McKay. Yes. 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 Thank That's you, me. Sister McKay. Thank you very much. Welcome back. I hope your meeting went well. <laughs> yes, it mm -hmm. So we have already addressed one of the questions. We, we, we are recording the session and we will be sharing it to us again so that we can review it. But the, the second um, topic that we are looking here is why we need not to baptize children. That is what we are addressing here. And the, what we have seen here is that Jesus said that uh, the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. And that's why we do not need to baptize them because the kingdom of heaven already belongs to them. 
uh, the second thing that was said here is, if Jesus did not baptize children, what he did to children is by laying his hands on them, and he, what we say, he has blessed them in another way. So uh, I was already called baptized when I was in the Catholic Church, when I was two years old, maybe one and a half years old. And uh, when I was baptized, I was not immersed into water. They sprinkle water on me. And sprinkling, I have never seen somebody who is burying and they sprinkle only dust on that person. When you bury somebody, you put that body under the ground so that nobody can see it. And, and baptism, as we explained as well, is a symbol of birth. So uh, if baptism is a symbol of birth, I have never seen, if some baptism is a symbol of birth, I have never seen a baby that is born and the feet is outside of the belly of the mother. Or maybe the head or one hand is outside of the belly of the mother. But when the baby is inside of the womb of the mother, it is completely, the, the entire body is completely immersed inside of that um, umbilical water that we, call, we can call it like that way. And it is fully inside. And when it is going to be born again, it is going out of the belly of the mother. And that is why the water is exactly the, the symbol where we are going out. When God created the earth, the, the entire earth after creation went out of water. When we are saved again and we are baptized, we go out of water. When we are also born from our mothers, we are out of water. And that is why going out of water is a symbol of baptism. When we continue with our next question now, it is, what is our uh, church manual saying? regarding this baptism. What is baptism according to the church manual? Uh, I would like to ask TK now to read this long uh, passage so that we can see it together. It is in the church, uh, Seventh-day Adventist church manual, page 29. Yes, my brother. Okay. <clears throat> baptism is a spiritual relationship. It can be entered into only by those who are converted. Only in this way can the purity and the spiritual caliber of the church be maintained. It is the duty of every minister to instruct those who accept the principles of the truth that they may enter the church on a sound spiritual basis. While there is no stated age for baptism, it is recommended that very young children who express a desire to be baptized should be encouraged and entered into an instruction program that may lead to baptism. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. In another way then, it says that when they are very young, then we encourage them to be in an instruction program that leads them to baptism, which means we don't baptize them yet, but we put them in an instruction program that prepared them for baptism. And it was said here, and I would like to highlight it very uh, in a crucial way. It says here that baptism is a spiritual relationship. And I have not seen a, a, a baby in a relationship with somebody else than the mother. And, and, and that is why you are not ready for relationship unless you have that opportunity to join. So we need to, re when we talk about relationship, it is an emotional relationship. It is also a physical relationship with that person. And you are not mature enough if you are still a baby for that relationship. And that is why we encourage only people who are mature to join that relationship. And it says that those who are converted only can be baptized. It says as well that we need to have 
uh, enter the church with a sound and spiritual basis. And that is why this, this discipleship class is there to teach us, as um, Michael said, to, the, to, to learn about the truth, but not only to teach us after, uh, before our baptism, but also after our baptism. Because Jesus said in that Matthew 28, as Michael said, is we need to observe what he taught us. And for you to know what he taught us, you need to learn first. So it is crucial that we study the Bible. Now we continue on the fourth section. The question now is, what is the spirit of prophecy talking about um, baptism? Because that is also another aspect that we need to understand. I will come back to you, my brother, Michael, if you may read for us uh, for, uh, Testimonies, Volume 1, page 169. Yes, sure. Yes, children, of eight, ten, children of 8, 10, or 12 years old enough to be addressed on the subject of personal religion. Are old enough to be addressed on the subject of personal religion. Do not teach your children with reference to some future period when they shall be old enough to repent and believe the truth. If properly instructed, very young children may have correct views of their states of their state as sinners and of the way of salvation through Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. In another way then, Ellen G. White is telling us here that they are old enough to address a subject of personal religion. And that is the reason we have Sabbath school classes for children where we are teaching them about the reality of sin and repentance of, and truth in our life. So we shall not neglect to teach and instruct them if they are old enough to learn about truth. So that is why we prepare them in the baptism for that ability for them to, to join uh, the baptismal class in such a way. In another way as well, if we summarize what we have learned today, this is what we said about children baptism. If the kingdom of God belongs to the children because of their innocence, why shall we still baptize them to clean themselves? I think that question is enough, uh, clear enough to uh, also explain to us why we shall not baptize children, but only uh, young children or young adults who are already aware of the reality of sin and who sinned and repented from it. Now, before we move on, uh, I think we need to come back to what Michael said in the next session because I already thought about it. So is there any comment that is uh, re uh, related to it? The next question is exactly back to what Michael just said, and it is uh, in the book of Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. It is talking about what Jesus commanded his disciple, the first church. Uh, so do you have any comments regarding the second section, please? You can unmute yourself. I assume then that there are no questions, no, no remark. Then let's move on with uh, the, the verse that uh, our brother Ma Michael led us uh, back to Matthew 28 and the verse 18 and 22 to, to 20. Uh, our brother Michael was very uh, right when he spoke about the making disciples and teaching. I would like to add to what he said two more comments. I would like to add to them two more comments. Number one is go. You cannot make disciples unless you go. And that is why we call the Seventh-day Adventist Church a movement. A movement means that you move from your place to, to other people. 
So when we say then go, it means that it is a movement. After you go, then you go and go out of your, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, what we call it again, um, it is named like uh, the place where you, uh, uh, place of comfort, you go out of your comfort zone and you go. The second thing that you do is you make disciples. And after you teach them to how to become disciple of Christ, then you baptize them, number three. And after you finish baptizing them, then number four, you teach them to observe all things. And another way, then you learn, you teach them to study the Bible again. And when you teach them to observe the Bible and everything, they will be ready to go. And after they are ready to go, they make disciples. And after they make disciples, they baptize. And after they baptize, the people who are baptized now are teaching themselves again about the observe. And this is a cycle, cycle of life that, that life that is happening. So Jesus is with, with us always, as long as we are following this cycle. Because a lot of people stop when they finish baptized of when we are baptized and they don't continue with this one anymore. And we are not amazed if they leave the church later on and they come back to their former state. So it is a cycle that you cannot go out. When you stop teaching yourself, when you stop learning, then you go back to where you started again and you need to be taught again. So this is a cycle that we need to follow. In another way then, back to the notepad, it is a cycle of four sections. It is to go, it is to make disciples, which is teaching, it is baptizing, and then to teach them, observe the commandment of God. That is what it says. And then now the second uh, question that he said is, what is then baptism bringing to us? What is baptism bringing to us. I would like to invite TK to read for us John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Let me copy and paste it on the notepad so that you can read it my brother. Yes please. Uh, it reads <clears throat> but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So baptism, if we can say, is giving you the right to become a children of God. You cannot claim that right unless you accepted the deal. So the deal is you get baptized, and you receive a right of being a child of God. Now the question that is, uh, I ask uh, my brother Albert to read now is this, number three. Uh, let me delete this first. How do we know a child of God? I would like you to read my brother, Romans chapter eight, Romans chapter eight and the verse 14. You may unmute yourself. I will be copying it on the screen what it means to be a child of God. Mm -hmm. You may read my book. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. These are? Are you seeing uh, it? For as many is a led by the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. It says these are the sons of God. On another, in another way, they are led by the spirit of God. How do we know that you're a child of God? If you are led by the spirit of God, you cannot claim to be children of God unless you're led by the spirit of God then. So that is the reason you need to be baptized 
because as we learned in John chapter 3, when you are uh, receiving the baptism of the spirit, then you receive uh, of the water, then you receive the baptism of the spirit. So you cannot claim to be children of God unless you have been baptized through water first. Now, question number four. This is it. What happens when the spirit led them? What happens when the spirit led them? So after you receive the spirit, what is the spirit leading you to do? I would like to invite now, uh, I think it is TK's turn now, to read Ch Acts chapter eight, uh, 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, my brother. This is very direct. In another word, they will become witnesses to whom? To Christ. To Jesus Christ, exactly. So when you get baptized them and you do not do that witness, uh, witnessing, uh, there is a problem with you. If you are baptized and you do not teach other people about Jesus, there is a problem in your life. And that is why we need to teach every time. We need to witness. We need to tell to people what Jesus did for us. And we need to be like Philip to teach also the, the, the uh, what was it again? The Ethiopian eunuch who was uh, in the chariot, as Christian said in his answer on, 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 the, on the, uh, our WhatsApp. We need to teach people so that they are aware of their needs for Jesus Christ. Now, the last part, I think the last part is this. Um, if we understand then, before we leave today, if we understand then, what is our duty? The fifth question that we are asking here is, what then is a church if you join a church? I would like to ask uh, uh, Michael or Sister uh, Coca, are you able to unmute yourself, please, and, and read it for us? What is a church according to the spirit of prophecy? It is in the book Spirit of Prophecy, Acts of Apostle, and uh, page one, and this is it. You may read, my sister. What is then a church? Ellen G. White, X of Apostle, page one. The church is God's appointment, appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service, and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. From the beginning, it has been God's plan that through his church shall be reflected to the world's his fullness and his sufficiency. The members of the church, those whom he has called out of darkness into his marvelous light, are to show forth his glory. The church is the re repository of the riches of the grace of Christ, and through the church will eventually be made manifest, even to the principalities and powers in heavenly places, the final and full display of the love of God. Ephesians 3, verse 10. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Makai. When we come back to this, the main reason you join a church is because, first of all, the church is an appointed agency. And the church is not the building. The church is not the building. The church is you and I combined together. And it means then that the agency that we say here is us. We are the agency that is spoken here. 
And outside of the agency, it says that we are organized. That's why the church is having church manual and so many organizations inside. We are organized for what? For service. That's what it says here. So if anyone is joining the church, just sitting and being a safe spectator, that person needs to think about his life. A church, a person joining the church is to serve, to be a servant. And then it says, it's mission. It is my mission because I am that church. Your mission because you're that church. Your mission is to carry the gospel to the world. So if you stop doing that service, and if you stop carrying the gospel to the world, there is a problem in, in your life. Your service is needed in the church and your gospel is needed outside of the church. Can I repeat it again? Your service is needed in the church and you carrying the gospel is needed outside of the church. So if you call yourself a church, a member of a church, do you do both things? Do you serve in your church? And do you carry the gospel outside of the church? The thing is this, it says, the church is the repository, which means then that you are the recipient, the vessel of the riches of the grace of God. And through the church will eventually be made manifest the principalities and the power in heavenly places, the final and full display of the love of God. I will highlight this one. If you don't speak about God, then you are hiding that love of God to people. You are hiding the love of God to people. And that is why you are hindering people from seeing the love of God. So today, my call for you is serve in the church and carry the gospel. That is the mission. Before we leave, I would like to invite Michael. Uh, the four of us, uh, the all, all, all of us, can we unmute all of us together, please? And let us um, read uh, one by one. Read one by one, number one, two, and three. Number one is Albert. Number two is Makai. Number three is Michael. Rotenda is number four, and we are one, and so on, and so forth. What are the vows of baptism? Can you read it from Albert first? Uh, I believe in God the Father, in His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. Number two, Sister I Makai. accept the death of Jesus to pay for my sins. Michael, number three. I accept the new heart Jesus gives me in place of my sinful heart. Thank you. Uh, TK, number four. I believe that Jesus is in heaven as my best friend and that he gives me the Holy Spirit so I can obey him. Thank you. Albert, number five. You may unmute yourself, Albert. Number five. Uh, Albert, are you with us, please? If not, Sister Makai, number five. I believe oh, God gave me the Bible as my most important guidebook. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Albert, number six. Uh, By God. Number six. By God. I think uh, he has. In... Mm -hmm. I want to obey the Ten Commandments, which include of the week as the Sabbath. The observance of the Sabbath. Uh, let me come back again. The first part then is about our belief in the Father, the Son, and Jesus Christ. The second part is about accepting the, 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 the sacrifice of Jesus for our sin. The third part is about accepting the, uh, my, my heart, Jesus in my heart, 
since I am a sinful person. Number four is about Jesus in heaven, who is also my best friend, and he gave his Holy Spirit so that I can obey. Number five is about the Bible that is said here. Number six is about me living in God and obey the Ten Commandments, including the Sabbath. Now, Michael, number seven. I want to help as many people as possible to be ready for the soon coming of Jesus. And this is exactly applying what we said, that the church is to serve the people in the church and to carry the gospel outside. So when you vote this, when you are baptized, you accept to go out for, the, for, for, for teaching people and you accept to serve within the church. Number eight, DK. I, I believe, believe God gives special oh, abilities to his people and that the spirit of prophecy is given to his chosen people. Thank you very much, Makai. It is about the spirit of prophecy that is talking, that is the little light that is leading up to the bigger right, the Bible. DK, the number nine, Rotenda. I want to help God's church with my influence, effort, and money. Which is about faithfulness and stewardship. It is talking about our service, our support to the church, because this is God's church. Now, back to Albert, verse uh, 9. Uh, I want to take good care of my body because the Holy Spirit lives there now. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about what we can eat. Do we wear jewelry or how do we behave and, and, and wear ourselves and our care of our body. That is what it is talking about here. The verse, uh, the 11th one, Michael. With God's power, I want to obey the basic principles of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Thank you very much. This is exactly the principle of life that is talking. How do you live? How do you sleep? How do you eat? All those things matters as you accept God as your personal savior. Now, uh, Rotenda, 12. I want to be baptized to show people I am a Christian. So your baptism is a, a sign, your uh, open uh, acceptation, acceptance of, of what you are, uh, would like to become as a Christian. And our lady, Sister Makai, you can read the 13 now. I want to be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I believe this church has a special message to give to the world. That is what is baptism. And after those 13 vows, then the church will vote each and every one of us, and we are baptized. So that's it for today. Uh, as you can see, it was full packed. We are exceeding eight minutes of the time. Uh, please forgive me. But I hope it was helpful to us as we went through those uh, study again today. Uh, do you have any, uh, any final message, any comments regarding what we studied today? You can unmute and you can speak before we leave. Okay. I don't see any hand, which means that I would like to request uh, Sister Makai. Yes, please. Yes, Michael. Oh, I would like to request Sister Makai to pray for us as we end today, please. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, dear Lord, for granting us the opportunity to learn about being disciples. Father, guide us as we go through this process so that we can know the truth and we can be able to observe the truth as it is outlined in your, in your holy book. Father God, we thank you for everything. We thank you also that we are alive. 
We are counted amongst the living this morning, dear Father. And we pray for everyone, dear Lord. At this stage, we do have people who are mourning for lost family members, lost friends. Father God, we are also praying for those that are sick, in hospital, sick, sick at home. Father God, place your hand on them. We know quite well that there is a balm in Gilead and you will be able to heal those who are sick. Heal us spiritually. Heal the children, dear Lord, that are going through depression. People who are contemplating suicide, dear Lord, guide them so that they can know the truth and know that through the fact that they have faith in you, they will be able to handle all the challenges in the world. Father God, I'm praying for this group as we are praying and we want you to guide us so that we can be your disciple, dear Lord. We thank you and we thank our brother Siri and his family. We thank them that, you know, they are able to support him to guide us through this uh, period or through this uh, process that we are undergoing. Father God, we want to thank you for everything, even for those things that I have not mentioned in this prayer today. We thank you in advance, dear Lord. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate a lot for all of you and for your faithfulness to join. Uh, next time, we will continue uh, back to the uh, Behold In Now because I think it is important what we have addressed today. Important enough, uh, if we don't understand why we need to be baptized and why we are members of the church, then it is useless for us to go further more. But now we understand that part. So we are going to talk about beholding next time, how to get dedicated to Jesus and to remain faithful unto his call. That is what we will be looking next time. 